Hello everyone, I'm going to show you how to make a halftone effect in Photoshop. Um, if you're unsure as what a halftone is, uh, I've got this image here. Now when you're printing uh, with ink, you can't really, like if it's a industrial process, you can't alter the strength of the ink. It's either ink or no ink. In this case, black ink against white paper. So the only way you simulate things getting darker is in this case by making these circles um, wider. So the narrower the circles are, the, the lighter the image actually gets. We can show you this in colour as well. So when you're printing in colour, you have cyan, magenta, yellow and black. And they put these screens, they make a screen for each uh, separate colour. And they combine them together and it actually makes your picture. Finally, I'll show you this. This is like a picture from a magazine. As you can see, you've got a cyan plate, a magenta plate, a yellow plate, a plate, and a black plate. All of these have their own halftone patterns on them. And when they're combined, these dots start to overlay each other. And when you zoom out, because this is extremely zoomed in, you get the impression of a, a color page in a magazine. Uh, but these days, we like to um, show this type of effect uh, to give it a retro feel to it. So first of all, well, what you must do is uh, screenshot your progress uh, throughout this. So first of all, grab yourself a picture of someone and paste it into Photoshop. So you just need to copy and paste it in. Now what I need to do is isolate this figure from the background. So I'm going to choose the Magic Wand tool. I'm going to click on this background color. Hold down the Shift key. I've set the tolerance to 30, so it really depends on what type of background. Now you can check to make sure you've got it all by pressing Q, which will enter quick mask mode. And if you double quick click, oh God, here we go. If you double click quick mask mode, you can change the color of the mask and also how intense it is. So I'm gonna set it to 90%, so I really wanna see what I've got here. Okay, that's not too bad. I just need to clean up the hair a little bit. So I've gone into the brush and I'm painting with either black press X or white. So anything we want to have masked off, we paint in black. That's good enough. That's absolutely fine. So we'll go back by pressing Q. Now we're going to delete the uh, background pixels by just pressing delete. So now we've, um, we've basically isolated this on a, on a white background. Uh, we're going to do some surgery to him as well. Poor guy. I'm going to take a rectangular selection tool. Select the bottom half of his body, slice that off, um, and you know what? I'm going to get a lasso tool. I'll just bring that in a little bit as well. That'll do fine. Okay, so first what we need to do is get rid of all the colour in this picture. So we're going to go to Image, Adjustments, Desaturate. And you can have a mess around with the brightness and contrast if you want just to punch it up a little bit, just to try and find the best part of the picture where it uh, gives all details. Click OK with that. Now behind it we want to put a geometric shape because this will look like almost like a t-shirt print at the end of it. Go to the background. I'm going to do a circle on mine, so I'm going to go up to the rectangular marquee, click and hold it and change to circle or ellipse. Hold down shift to keep it as a circle. Drag and pull out to make a sort of halo effect. And let go. Now if you want to move this around, we do not go into V like so. Well we can do on this, but if, if we'd select this uh, front part, it would have actually moved the pixels around. But seeing as we've got an empty layer here, we're okay doing that. Uh, but what you can do in future is if you have a selection you want to move, just click inside the selection. We'll line this up. That seems pretty good. And we're going to fill this now with a mid grey. It doesn't matter how light or dark it is, just stay away from black and stay away from white because this this um, technique depends on it being a mid tone. Fill that in. Nice. Um, I'm going to make a little bit more breathing room as well. I'm going to press C to crop and I'm just going to click on this one and drag it up a little bit. So what we need to do now, we can actually add a Photoshop filter halftone effect, which is go to Filter, Filter Gallery, 
and half tone pattern. Ah, wait a minute, we need to flatten it first. Layer, flatten image, filter, filter gallery. Right, so it does a half tone, but it does a really rubbish version of it. It's very low quality. It isn't actually, a, you couldn't use that as a half tone on a printer. In order to make a correct half tone, we need to change it into a bitmap image. And we do that by going to mode. First of all, we can't get straight to bitmap because it's grayed out, so we need to go grayscale first. Click discard, which basically says, do you want to get rid of all the color information? And we do. And now we go to bitmap. And bitmap is a, it's a very sort of, this, this one is a very low quality. It's literally just black or white. So Photoshop asks you, well, how do you want us to make the black and white? Should you do threshold? Should you do a weird pattern over it? No, we want to do a half tone screen. And as you can see, it's got three dots there, which means you'll have options when you click OK. Main thing here, so the input is 72 pixels per inch. We want to up it to at least 200 um, because we because otherwise the dots won't show up and it'll look a mess. So we're going to click OK. And it's going right, okay, well what type of halftone screen do you want? Do you want it round, diamonds, ellipses? Um, and my voice just cracked, but never mind. <laughs> we'll keep it as round. Uh, this is the main thing you have to worry about. If we put frequency 100, then click OK, it basically puts uh, 100 dots per square inch or something like that. It's too small to even see an effect when you zoom in. So we'll go back one step by going control and Z to undo. I'm going to go back into that again, mode, bitmap, and we're going to change this to 20 pixels an inch. Oh, sorry. Resolution should be 200 pixels. Frequency should be 20. In fact, I'm going to do it with ellipses and see what that looks like. So when we click OK, these ellipses should be a lot more visible. And they are. Pretty cool. So that's the first half of it. Now what we're going to do, we're going to colour this. So in order to colour it, we're in a bitmap image now. We need to go back and change it into an RGB image. So go to image, mode. We have to go through grayscale first. Click OK. Image, mode, RGB. So now we're back in RGB. And we can put a gradient over this by clicking on the adjustment layer here in your panel, or you can go to layer, new adjustment layer. Whichever way you do it, you want to go onto gradient map. Click onto that, click OK. And what this will do, it'll put a gradient over your image. Uh, at the moment it's put a gray to white image uh, gradient because that's the last gradient I used. And anything on this side is the darkest color in the image. Anything on this side is the lightest color of the image. So if we click it to green and red, for instance, now the black ink is shown up as red, the white ink is shown up as green. So if we were to OK that, you'd probably want to reverse it with this reverse button. There you go. Um, I would say get a better contrast than that. So you can click on the red, click on the color, and let's just lighten it up, make it more of a sort of pinky colour. You can choose whatever one you want. Uh, there's no point in really doing three colours because we're only working with two colours, but uh, the reason I'm doing doing it like this is because you get a much better preview much quicker. Hmm, that's is that all right? Yeah, that's not too bad. Let's use that, but let's reverse it again. Okay, so we've got our uh, colour that we like. Now what we want to do is this halo we want to actually do in a different colour. And there's probably a few ways of doing that, but the easiest way is just to make a new layer. And we're going to use a brush. And we're just going to paint over it. So we want a colour which is going to sit nicely with this. I'm going to, I think a sort of weird pink colour might look good. Right. Don't worry about going over the outline of the circle. But you want to be a bit aware to try and keep it off the face. If it overlaps a little bit, it's not that bad because when you do print with plenty of different plates, you can have issues where it doesn't register up perfectly and you get some overlap. And it's actually, uh, aesthetically, for the type of uh, look we're going for, 
could work out quite nicely. Okay, so I'm just using my tablet for this. You can use a mouse, It'll be a bit more fiddly. Fill in all of that. Now I need to change the blending mode. I mean, you can leave it like that if you want, but we're going to do something which is a bit darker, perhaps. No, you know what? Screen in this instance works. Right, so we've got it as a screen, but we want to remove all this excess. And what we also need to do is these dots should the the white part of these dots should all be transparent, i.e., blue, which doesn't make very much sense, but it's it's the truth. Go into the background layer, choose your magic wand tool, click anywhere on the blue, and that'll select everything that's blue or background colour in our in our case. Can you see? So once we've got that selection, if you go back up to layer one and hit delete, see what it does? It knocks out every single one of those dots. So it actually looks like a proper screen print now. We're almost there. Um, we're gonna add a paper texture now. So I'm going to go on to Google, look up a paper texture, get it, make sure it's a decent quality, uh, decent re resolution, copy the image, come back onto here, paste it in, mess around with the size of it, hit OK, change the blend mode again, we want something which is going to go on top of this. Do you know what? I like that. I'm not going to go anywhere. For, I'm not going to care what the other ones look like. Uh, but we do need to tone it down a bit because we don't want it to be completely in your face. Let's crop this image by going to C for crop. And just take a moment to make sure that the spacing is beautiful. And let's get in there. Yeah, that's good. Wicked. Right, there's one last thing you can do with this, and that's to make a registration error on it. So what you do is select all these layers, and we want to make a copy of these, a flattened copy. Easiest way of doing that is Control, Alt, Shift, E. And as you can see, it's duplicated it and thrown it here. And now what we'll do is move to the channels, and we just want to nudge one of these channels. So we need to select the entire image. So Control A to select that. I'm going to select the red channel, but I'm going to turn on the preview by clicking the eyeball on the RGB. Go on to V for your move tool and just nudge it a tiny bit. Could try it with the green one, nudge that up maybe, and the blue maybe nudge that. And we'll zoom in. And we should, ah, can you see? Very, very subtle in this picture. It depends what picture you use but you're seeing at the edges, you're getting this fringing. See, so I've just moved that a load, but it's separating these colors out. So it looks like there's been an error at the printer. Um, use that with caution. You don't want to overuse it because it'll look a bit ridiculous, but you can just do something like that, which is a sort of registration error. And when you're happy with that, I'm just going to recrop it. You're done really. And that looks like something you could stick on a t-shirt. You can then add more layers on top. You can invert it if you want. Go on to adjustments, adjustments and invert. You get a, something completely different. I suppose you could go into hue saturation. That won't allow me to do that. Ah, which is because RGB isn't selected. Adjustments, hue saturation. So you can get a base color. Yeah, there you go. And you can play around with that to your heart's content. That looks like some awful VHS from the 80s. So that's how you do it. Have a go on it. Uh, make sure you upload it to your website with a bit of annotation. And uh, post your results. Thank you. Goodbye.